Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the LG QNED 99 in 75 inches. LG's latest venture into the mini LED market gifts us with the QNED in 2021. Combining the quantum dot, nano cell and emitting diodes tech seen in other LG models to bring us a new breed of LCD TV. Using the highest number of mini LEDs, you can expect a much more defined, sharp, consistent picture like you've never experienced before. So the LG QNED 99 comes in three sizes in total with the smallest coming in 65 inches and the largest coming in a whopping 86 inches. Today we have with us the 75 inch size and as you can see the box is already quite large. The box does lift up over the top as usual but you will need a second pair of hands for this when lifting and manoeuvring the TV as a whole due to its size and heavy weight. Opening up the top, you get all the accessories you need, including the magic remote, a couple of attachments for tidying cables and hiding mount fixtures on the back, both parts of the stand, and an IR blaster cable. The stand feels sturdy, made out of a combination of weighted metal and a hard-wearing plastic. You will need to attach the stand on the back of the TV, so make sure you carefully lie the TV face down on a covered surface to do this. Screwing in the stand was relatively simple, just slotting the two pieces together and fixing them in place with the eight screws provided. Before I put it on the stand, let's take a quick look at the back. It looks nice and clean with just a few slim vents and the channel for all the connections. As with most LG TVs, the power cable is fixed to the back, but it's still a pretty good length measuring at around 59 inches, which is fine for both wall mounting and reaching around to your nearest outlet. In the top left and right hand corners, there are two square indents built supposedly for mounting the TV to a gallery stand, but these can easily be covered with the two push-in panels provided. It also supports VESA mounting with any compatible 400 by 400 mount to give you more space if you need it. For the inputs, you get a handful of the most used connections along the side for easy reach when wall mounted or on a stand, with the rest lined up below in an L shape. Those ones can be a little tricky to get to, but hopefully these should be the inputs you swap out a little less frequently. Along the side, you get a USB and two of the four HDMIs. And on the bottom set, you get two more USBs, HDMI ports three and four, a LAN port for your ethernet, a digital optical audio out, a satellite cable input, and an IR blaster input. You'll notice that LG is proud to display the 8K at 60Hz compatibility here on all four HDMI ports. Now this may be a bit of a stretch as there isn't a lot of 8K content out there right now to fully make use of this just yet, but it does mean each one has that 2.1 compatibility for full 4K content with a native 120Hz refresh rate, so you can connect all of your next-gen consoles and enjoy eARC connection to your soundbar without constantly switching out HDMIs. So now let's get into the overall display and design choices on the front. It's a stunning display with brushed metal edges, a practically edge-to-edge -edge screen with a small border along the base and a small sensor in the center at the bottom. It even has a hidden power button just underneath the sensor, letting you turn on the TV easily if you can't find your remote. The stand looks impressive from the front with that nice curved design shaping the screen below. I find that due to the sheer size of this display, it did wobble a little when I was connecting the wires to the back but the stand held it firmly in place and I had absolute surety that it wouldn't go anywhere if I accidentally knocked it. Speaking of wires, I like the integration of the cable tidy system on the back of the stand for helping maintain that minimalistic look. It was deep enough to fit a few wires inside and it came with a cover that clips over the top to hide any wires from view. Now it's on the stand and ready to go, let's get into the setup. As usual, you'll have to go through a few preliminary menus, letting you enable features, accept terms and conditions, tune to TV services, and log into your LG account. It's a quick process, but if you don't have time, you can simply just skip the majority of it and set it up later. The home menu is nice and familiar, showing all of my most used setting options towards the top, before moving into streaming apps and then the most recent shows on offer. But aside from all these menus, I often use the magic remote to navigate my way around, either using the handy cursor feature or using the hotkeys built in. It features four of the top streaming services this year, such as Netflix and Disney+, letting me jump straight into it from any import with just the press of a button. As I'm reviewing this TV, I'm going to go ahead and turn off energy saving mode. This is just so I can give you the most accurate brightness levels as energy saving keeps reducing screen brightness to save on energy consumption. It's also important to check for updates on starting up the TV for the first time, as having out of date software can impact full use of some apps and features. Getting into the display specifications on this TV, we have an Ultra HD 8K Quantum Dot Nano Cell Full Array Dimming IPS panel made up of a mini LED backlight. 
To fully experience the beauty of this, it's all powered by an A9 Gen 4 AI processor with a whole abundance of AI enhancing features to maintain a complete consistency and quality with everything you watch. So what makes this TV different from any other venture that LG have tried out this year is that this is the first time we're seeing mini LED tech inside an LG TV. This is kind of a big deal as LG's OLEDs have always been known for their low brightness levels, so integrating this improved brightness control means that you get better contrast, a much brighter picture without compromising on blacks, and basically a lot less of those annoying deformities that spoil the view, such as the halo effect that you sometimes see in dark scenes. With all of this in mind, I wanted to show as much variety and content on this TV as I could in various light conditions and at different angles, to try and show off how brilliant this new picture is. Before we get into that though, I just want to take you through some of the picture modes and settings that will help you get the most out of your TV. Starting off, I had a little play around with the brightness settings. Now you get two scales here, panel and screen brightness. The panel brightness largely manipulated the mini LED aspect, drastically changing the brightness, whereas the screen brightness was much more subtle. I kept the panel brightness on high for now so I could see what the panel looked like with various content, and the screen brightness I had set to default. Overall I found I didn't need to alter these settings again when utilising the picture modes. Now we have 8 picture modes that help adapt the picture best to what you watch. They're pretty much the same across all LG TVs this year, but with this model for most of the time I switched between standard, cinema and the expert ISF settings. Cinema mode gave off that nice muted cinematic look that I've come to expect with movies, and standard mode I felt suited regular TV shows quite well as I wasn't really looking for any particular picture style. The expert picture modes worked exceptionally well, especially when in a dark room, because it instantly brought everything down so watching a bright screen was comfortable with the lights off. Now the QNED 99 has an impressively high amount of dimming zones, coming in at over 2000 in total. I did keep local dimming on low throughout, and across the board I had no problem watching bright and dark scenes. It all came out nicely balanced with no obvious inconsistencies in brightness. I did a few quick brightness and dimming tests just to check, and both came out fine with no blatantly worrying results. I was pleased to see no significant glow behind subtitles in dark movies, getting some very sharp contrast overall and some brilliant solid black within the shadows. Now as it happens, this TV has a native 8K resolution, along with Dolby Vision and HDR are 10 to boot. There's no arguing that the picture didn't look stunning when watching explosive films as each one packed so much colour and ridiculously sharp detail despite the 75 inch size. Now there isn't a lot of 8K content out there at the moment, so you won't really get to benefit from it completely just yet, but it's great to future proof your TV for when that eventuality comes as standard, such as 4K did, and it means everything you watch will easily be compatible with your super resolution TV. If you really enjoy your old movies and TV shows that predate high definition, then you're really going to want to take a look at some of the AI features on offer here. Some of them are more specific to certain types of content, while others just help upscale lower resolution content up to that sharper standard. I watched a few 80s movies alongside some non-remastered TV shows, and it was impressive how good it looked considering it being blow up five times its intended size. Sound was pretty easy to test out on this TV, as again I had help from those handy AI features. It has adaptive sound, which is particularly helpful as I honestly didn't have to touch the sound controls at all no matter what I was doing. Speech was super clear even with without the clear voice mode, and I got some impressive bass from watching action scenes, which I was very pleased with. I know Dolby Atmos is particularly important for watching some of those classic movies, so you'll be pleased to hear that it fully supports this, letting you finally experience that full cinematic effect they originally intended you to hear. Now I know when it comes to looking for your next TV, gaming is really important to some, as some of the latest consoles are coming out with such beautifully engineered games that you really need a high powered TV just to give them justice. With 2.1 connectivity, a completely native super fast refresh rate and game optimizer mode, this TV can easily rival some of the latest gaming monitors. Now it's important to get a few things straight before getting straight into the game. I have the Xbox Series X with me here to test out on the QNED 99 today, connecting using a high speed HDMI to ensure that I get that untapped quality that Xbox is putting out. Taking a look at the console settings, I made sure I have all the bells and whistles enabled from 4K to ALLM, so I get the full quality this TV is capable of. You may notice that I can't enable variable refresh rate here. The QNED 99 does not support this feature however, but if you see what's coming up you'll see it's nothing to worry about. And as you can see in the Xbox settings, 
settings, there's a long list of everything that this TV is capable of doing, straight from 4K at 120Hz all the way down to HDR compatibility. Now getting straight into the gameplay, I tested out Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4 and I can honestly say they both ran smoothly without missing a beat. I feel this is largely down to the powerhouse that is the game optimizer. Opening up the pop-up menu at the bottom of the screen, I can monitor basic stats, enable different modes, and access the full game menu without leaving the game at all. The main optimizer menu offers insight into the current FPS rate and enable features, as well as allowing me to adjust sound features and picture stabilizers. When in a bright room, I found being able to manipulate the black stabilizer incredibly helpful when playing a dark act in Gears, as I could then clearly see everything in the shadows to avoid any nasty surprises. So I played Forza with the game optimizer both on and off. You might not be able to tell through the footage, but sitting relatively close to this XL display, things looked more realistic, it was much sharper, the colours popped more, and driving at full speeds was smooth sailing so to speak. Having that full potential unlocked made gameplay so much more enjoyable in my opinion, because I felt more connected when having no distractions such as stuttering, feeling more like I was in the game rather than just spectating it. So having tested out this TV for a good couple of days, I was certainly not disappointed. I got exactly what was advertised on the box, a new TV viewing experience with a next level of quality that hasn't quite caught up with the general content just yet. I got a beautiful picture no matter what I watched or played, and the assistance from the picture modes and AI features really made everything I switched to consistently brilliant in an effortless way. So what do you think about LG's QNED Mini LED TV? Let us know in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe to Box where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.